So I picked up one of these uh, XT IDE cards that's basically a, a little IDE adapter card that can be used in an XT computer. Some research online showed this would also work in the 5150 PC. So that I go ahead and start the build on this and see where we get to. So the first thing of course are sockets. Need chip sockets. Looks like I need a 28 pin socket. So I've got a 28 here. Pins on these get a little banged up. but some 20 pin, there's a 20, there's a 20, 20, looks like I need one more 20, I'm trying to get all sockets that match, just because I think it looks better even if you can't see them underneath the chips, oh and there's another 20 buried in there. Looks like I need a 16 and 214. I'm going to have to dive into a different box. Just a C of 16 pin sockets here. There's a 16, 214. It'll need two dip switches, which I will put in later. So, I think that gets us through sockets are picked out. On to doing some soldering. So, on to a bit of soldering. Get a uh, socket in each one of the four corners. Make sure the notches are consistently and consistent and correct. Take these guys on. Oops. If you've been watching my videos, you've seen me do this before. Feeling to make sure all the pins are through, which they are. Uh, hopefully, I can find my good glasses here. down the corners So, the corners are tacked down, they've got this all in frame, I don't, sorry, the corners are tacked down, the sockets look flush, the notches are the correct direction, so I mentioned this in other videos but I'll mention it here, I solder the corners first because that gives me an indication I have the right size socket. If I had to put a smaller socket in here accidentally and went to solder in that upper corner there wouldn't have been a pin. So it would just give me an idea that I had put the wrong size socket in. But, uh, in this case everything looks good so we'll just go ahead and solder this up. I'm sure it's really exciting watching me solder away here. I'm hoping I've got most or if not all of the parts for this in my inventory here. It should be pretty close. Well, I won't bore you with the remaining soldering. Well, I'm down to the uh, last socket which is the 28 pin socket for the uh, 28C256 ROM. There it goes, the notch is the correct orientation. Tack 
couple of pins. Doesn't quite look flush. I guess it was. And we just simply walk through this set of pins and all of the sockets are soldered up. Joint looks a little bit cold. Sweet. Sockets are in place. So, move on to the next components. I think maybe I'll move on to the resistors. Well, it looks like there's a 470 ohm resistor. I believe the 470Rs are back here. So, I need a 470. You know that I prefer to uh, looks like on point four will work. You know, I prefer to form the leads if I can. I just think it makes for a neater install. Here's a four seventy and two ten K. And brown, black, red, 10K. These are just very inexpensive Chinese carbon film resistors. Uh, for this kind of application, they're fine. And there was two 10K and I prefer to get the tolerance bands all the same direction, just a little bit nicer. Uh, install, I just think it looks a little bit better. Flex the leads out a bit. And we'll solder those guys up. It wasn't flush to the board. I had bent one of the leads a bit and had fallen back through. So three fixed resistors. I think I'm going to have to go find a schematic for the board. Uh, there's two resistor networks it calls for that are probably either 1K or 10K. They're next to the dip switches, so the odds are really good that they're uh, pull-up resistors. And looking at the board, they're pull-up resistors. I see this ROM enable here, and I'm curious if I can use a... I need to go find the schematic for this. If I can jumper this for a 27C256 rather than a 28C256, it would be easier because I've got plenty. A 27C256 is in stock. It looks like the spiking cap is some point one caps. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Looks like I need nine point one caps. Anyhow, I'm going to go look for schematic, and I'll come back. So I did a bit of digging online. Oh, wrong glasses. Glasses and me. Such fun. Did a bit of digging online and found some documents. Uh, the register map will be needed kind of a picture of a completed board and looking at this picture I missed this one shows two resistors over here this shows one I've missed a 470 ohm resistor uh, 
boot ROM locations. I'm going to put the boot ROM on the card since uh, I don't have a spot on the actual motherboard that'll take a ROM of this pin out. And ultimately a build of materials and write a bunch of notes. So the build of materials calls for the resistor networks are on here someplace. Uh, yeah, R1, RP12, uh, 10K. So they're just pull up resistors. So anything close to 10K would work. But I need to put in that missing 470 ohm. And that's the wrong box. Nope. Yeah, this always gets to be fun with different respins of the board. Having differences, which is of course why you respin a board. Um, so there's a 470 ohm here. This 470 ohms for feeding an external LED, and the one appears for feeding the onboard LED. Uh, so for current limiting to the LEDs, I should say. him soldered up. Oh, that pin's still rather warm. So I'm looking for some 10K bust. And as you can see, over the years I've collected a lot of resistor networks. Uh, I've got a whole set of 10K bust here. Be sure to get bust. Bust means there's one power pin. And uh, then re resistors off to that one power pin, where if they're non bust, it's just a bunch of resistors in there. And non bust will not work. So this is, I believe that guy right there is going to work for me. And he has, it'll be two of these. This is a mix of pools. Uh, a lot of these have solder on the pins where I pulled them off other boards. I think I just dropped them to the wrong place. New stock, uh, when I buy parts, I tend to uh, buy a few extra. This one actually looks like a pool. Because these are pools, I will go ahead and test each resistor position just because they do get damaged when you actually unsolder them and pull them out. I need to go to ohms. So pin 1 is common. This is labeled 10K-1-103. Pin 1's got the dot on it, so pin 1 is common. So I should find from sure this is coming through in the camera. From pin 1 to each one of the pins I should find 10k, 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 10. Easier to test now than to put it in and eventually discover a open resistor. Those all measure fine. You may notice I'm measuring these on the static dissipative mat here. Uh, the resistance to this is so high that if there's any influence on what I'm measuring here, it's negligible. I'm just looking to make sure I have about 10K in each resistor position, which I do. Again, as I've mentioned in other videos, uh, patience, attention to detail. doing things like you just saw me do, make sure each one of the resistors is actually good. Having a bit of trouble flexing those pins out a bit so it'll stay in place. I could, I guess, use some tape to hold it in as well. Resistor networks. 
I solder one pin. Then I take a look at it on the board and I heat that pin and move it till it's straight just because I think it looks better. Both of these, of course, are hanging a little bit crooked. Pin one is to the pin one. I think I got pin one to pin one on both. Yes and yes. And we can go ahead and solder these up. This is so exciting watching me solder. You know, I won't bore you with the other soldering here since you really can't see what I'm doing anyhow. Resistor networks are in. We're on to the 0.1 microfarad ceramic disc caps. Uh, look for some in here that just have the default spacing already it's just easier to deal with I'm trying to bend leads these should work I hope no nope. it's a little bit wider than that these are a little bit wide it's meant for a different style of capacitor uh, do I have anything in here without bending leads a bit I could conceivably go with these. Really don't have anything with the same spacing, but the, these will mount just fine. Well, I've got a 0.1 microfarad disc, capacitor or ceramic capacitor in each one of the positions. It's just a matter now of going through and soldering these up and trimming the leads. As you know, it's so exciting watching somebody solder. Well, I won't bore you. So we move on to pen headers. There's a dual a five position down here that isn't used, apparently the interrupt isn't used, and then I'll go ahead and put a pen header in it. There's a two position and two three position on the board, and one there to jumper plus five. So, in the sea of stuff I have, I should find uh, sufficient headers to do this. This is actually kind of a collect-all of junk. Uh, there's a pre-cut. Five pin. Oh, it's missing pins. Now let me cut a five pin. Which will go right there. And do I have any... Two pin, a three pin, a three pin, and a two pin. on these to keep them from falling out when I flip the board over. So maybe I can get the tape to peel up here. There we go. And 
and as I always do I will tack one pin and then check them for squareness Maybe I can get one pin to heat there There's a two pin down here that didn't actually take solder and the interrupt one down here which is of course unused based on what I've read that one's certainly not as square as I'd like neither is that one those look okay. So now it's just a matter of soldering all these little pins. Of course that assumes I can find them all. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the field of vision here. Don't know if I'm succeeding or not. notice this card actually has gold plated pins on the edge connector which is very nice so somebody's attention to detail on the card was nice we'll move on from here to dip switches this is again a mix of reclaim and new and stuff I got inexpensively on uh, eBay or when there's a big sale at like uh, uh, oh there was a big sale at James Co I think that I got some excellent pricing on let's take a look here so they have open so they've got the number one to the top on both of these so they go in this orientation according to the picture. Let's position one high. Oops. Nearly grabbed the tip of the soldering pencil. That would have been a quick wake up call. Which isn't flush. Again, a reason to only tack in the uh, two corners. There, they're both now flush. And I'll finish soldering those. So, uh, I thought about how I want to hook up the connector here and I like to do the same thing they did with the right angle. That way you can take a ribbon cable and or uh, directly plug a little card into it and it turns out I actually have the, the right one here. Got lucky. This is a sea of, of again connectors that have just been purchased surplus over the years. Uh, I think very few of these I bought new if none. Uh, just as I randomly come across them places uh, I know I got way too many of these, but they came from a, a PC recycle place for like pennies each. So I just buy them up, stock them where I can get at them, and go from there. So, on to the next step. This little connector. I will tack a couple of pins, make sure I've got it flush. The 
if you can see, but it looks nice and square. At least I think it does. Put a little pressure on it. Push again. Oh, you heard it move there. Well, I think that's good to go. I will finish soldering that up. So I've given the board a quick one over. I don't see any missed solder joints. I've retouched up a couple of them that look cold. The parts are all in, or at least the, the sockets. Uh, I will still need to, and that still ended up a little bit crooked. Oh well. Of course, I've got to find the ICs for every place, see if I actually have an IC that'll work in here. Uh, and go from there. Well, we've got the wall of logic behind us here. And we'll start picking pieces out of it to stuff into the board. I see U3, 74F573, 73, and U2573. 73. Hopefully, I've got some 74LS 573s here. And perhaps I don't. Those all. We're all 541s, and we'll come back to that. U1 and U4 are 74 LS 245 buffers, 245s. Oh, I've only got a few of those left. I have to order some more. So that is U1. Look through to the silk screen. And U. Four two forty five U six and nine or six eighty eights. I thought I had six eighty eights here, but it looks like I may actually not. I may have to go to the the mixed bin, I've got a bunch of mixed parts, 680s, so these are probably all 682s. Follow with 373s, well, not being as lucky as I wanted to be U8, a 74LS32, which I know I have. So I can dig one out. And see the part number on it. That's almost impossible to read. Seventy four LS thirty two at U eight. This one looks like it's a pool. Thirty-two U seven seventy-four LS or U eight. That part's in the wrong place. Pretty easy to do. Seventy-four LS thirty-two is at U eight. There's only one U seven is a seventy-four LS one thirty-eight, which again I know I have. It's interesting that I managed to drop a fourteen-pin dip into a sixteen-pin socket. Oh come on! I didn't notice it when I did it. Seventy-four LS one thirty-eight. U5 is a 74 LS04. And then the pins a bit. Sorry, I've got this out of frame. Well, sometimes they're just stubborn. U9, that's the 688s that I don't seem to have. 
U3, U2, U2, 2374, F573. I would have sworn I had 573s. It's really bizarre that I don't. No. Nope. For such a ton of logic, certainly didn't have as much as I thought I would. 645s. There's a fair amount of one off stuff here. Oh, Z80 processors. Uh, 8080 clock generators. That's just a bunch of stuff. None of them are 2010. Flash memories, which are going to be 240s. Now, I guess I go dig elsewhere. Well, I've got other places to look here. It looks like they do have some 688s. So I thought I did. 74 or HC. It's most likely going to be fine. Yeah, HCT. I'm guessing HC will be fine. And the 688s going U6 and U9. So one here. And one here. That didn't go in. Nope, that didn't go in. And pin or just being stubborn. And I'm looking for 573s and by golly I've got some 573s here see the part numbers seem familiar so I've got TTLICs that I've been hoarding collecting whatever term you want to use since I was a teenager and that was a lot of years ago Ah, bent some pins. Why my finger slipping? So let's see, U3, 573, U2, 573, U4, 245, U8, LS32, U5, LSO4, U7, 138, U6, another 680 or 688, U9, 688, and U1, 245. So, I think that's all the core logic. As so you can see, it is a nice assortment. There are several of these that are kind of organized into uh, boxes such as this. I've got a really good span of devices. So now really the question is, can I find a 28C 64 or 256. I'll have to go dig. So everything in these trays are pulls. And I've got a lot of them. That's DRAMs. I'm looking for 28C, 64, 28C, 256. Is that a RAM or a 
Yeah, those are rams. We'll just keep looking here. This is almost all processors or support chips. Lots of RAM. Those are all too big. RAM, RAM, RAM. I'm afraid I may have pulled my last Zycor part, which might be 2804. Oh, it's only a 24 pin, 2468. That's a 24 pin device. Which means it will be too small. Looks like it's mostly more microprocessors, chipsets. Say so everything in these, I think do a part as a pool. Nothing there. Nope, not seeing anything that jumps out. Lots and lots of RAM. Get it to the last shot. And the last tray. This is mostly Z80s. There's some video chipsets, character generator, ROMs. Uh, some nice white 8080s back here. There's at least three of them. Second week of 73. You know, 74, 74, some nice. There's a Z80 APIO. There's a Z, another Z80 PIO in ceramic. Just some nice parts that over the years I've uh, been able to acquire. Well, there's one more place that I might find these parts. It's a lot more of the same. Nothing even the right package. There are some CRT controllers. A bunch of uh, flash devices, 29 C010s and O20s. No, I think the last two. 28C devices I had have been used, which is a shame. This one's heavy. Uh, it's got all these uh, battery backed up RAMs, 1770s, floppy controllers. Keyboard controllers, yeah, well, shoot. Well, got that far before I ran out of luck. Uh, I know there was one extra floating around here. I pulled it out. I don't think I used it. I'm going to have to keep digging. Well, at this point, I went ahead and uh, paused my build of the uh, XDID as I didn't have the flash memory that was required. I'll go ahead and get online and get some ordered, and we'll pick up in the next video uh, once I re receive those.